checking out the hair. <laughs> yep. What did you get? He was a little scared for his journey. Why? He has some trepidations about making the journey. What's up? Reagan, tell him what your journey was like. Would you give it a thumbs up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and two enthusiastic thumbs up, kid. We just put our toddler down. It's been a day. What's so sad face? It's been a day? I mean, it hasn't been like a bad day. It's just been a weird day. So today is the day the spirit baby medium said Cappy would be born. And my only labor signs. I guess I kind of had some contractions, like one or two in the middle of the night, but like that's nothing. And then I had the pre-labor poop. You also moved down last night. But like, I don't know, I woke up and I was just like, I don't think this baby's coming. It's just, I don't know. You know, with Reagan, I was waking up throughout the night with contractions that I didn't realize were legitimate contractions and consistent. I did some work today. <coughs> he took her to the park, put her down for a nap, and then she pooped. And so she woke up from her nap. <laughs> <laughs> like an hour later. Very exciting recap of our day. So then I nursed her. I was nursing her, contractions started and they were like regular. And they were like four and a half minutes apart. Felt good about it. Started at 2 p.m. It was lasting almost till three. But I wasn't sure if it was just because she was like on my boob for that whole hour. So we got up. I walked her over to the park. I walked home from the park. <laughs> <laughs> the storytelling at its finest. I'm really tired because despite the fact that I only had like two or three contractions in the middle of the night last night, I decided it would be a good idea to stay up for an hour and a half. And I've been sleeping amazing this pregnancy, but I think like the anxiety of like, oh my god, is this it? was getting to me. By 2.45, I was really convinced like this baby's coming today. I feel like as crazy as this is gonna sound, I was watching Alan Fisher's YouTube video where she was like, I just decided I was in labor and you know, four hours later the baby was born. So that's kind of where I feel like I'm at now. Okay. We're making the decision. She's in labor. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Am I just like claiming that? Well, hang on. I don't know if I want to do it like right this second. Okay. <laughs> because I'm I like... mean, listen, my ideal time is like 5, 6 a.m. tomorrow. To go into labor? Or to have the baby? To go into labor. Why? Oh, because then I can sleep for a little? Yeah. Well, I'm kind of torn. I really like the idea of just like claiming it and going into labor right now. Having the baby before midnight and Reagan sleeping the whole time. And it's very calm and relaxing and I don't have to stress about her. On the other hand, I'm like, man, you have so much adrenaline after you give a baby, I'm gonna be up for like 24 hours? It sounds crazy. Mm-hmm. It's intense. I just feel like very, very relaxed. Where I'm like, I could be a lot further along than I realize. It feels like my brain is taking a nap right now. <laughs> <laughs> is there like significant pressure down there? I mean, I don't know what significant is. There's there, pressure. There's pressure. More so than yesterday. Oh, yeah. You know, this is the hard part because they're like Braxton Hicks usually only last for 30 seconds. But when I was in labor with Reagan, her contractions only ever felt like they lasted for 30, 40 seconds ever. So I don't know. This time I'm like, okay, I can actually feel like the rise from the bottom of my uterus going all the way up to my top. But I still am only getting like 40, 45 seconds, which is consistent with last time. Oh yeah, Braxton Hicks back. You know, the thing with everybody's definition, everyone's like, real contractions, you feel pain. Braxton Hicks, you feel discomfort. Well, what if you just feel discomfort when you have contractions? I think I'm having one now. I don't know. I see it. You see it? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It's like I would say this is over, even though I know that this is all still like tense right now. Mm -hmm. And it was only like 30 seconds. But I can, I mean, I know it's tight still. This is why I don't like timing contractions. 
press it. Sure, we can call it over. It's soft now. So that was six minutes apart from the last one. <laughs> I hate having contractions. Am I? I'm 41 weeks in a day now. So I'm officially more pregnant than I've ever been in my life. <sighs> it's been an emotional few days. So 23rd, obviously we thought Spirit Baby Medium said it was go time. Didn't happen. He did his reading that night. Go time on the 24th didn't happen. So what I have since come to learn is that I have been in prodromal labor, meaning false start labor. And I never had Braxton Hicks with Reagan, so I never really like knew what those feel like and I still don't really know what those feel like. I asked God to give me a sign. Are these Braxton Hicks that I've been having on and off for the last few days or are they real? Because they have felt so real to me and they were so consistent. Like I was having them six to seven minutes apart, lasting 45 seconds to a minute, which is how long my contractions last for over an hour. And there was just like a lot of stuff where it felt real. So I asked God to give me a sign. So then last night, the contractions started in my back and moved into my thighs, which I had never experienced before, even with my first. But like that's like a big distinction between Braxton Hicks and real contractions so I'm like okay contractions are definitely real and then I read a birth story about a woman who was 41 weeks and five days had been in prodromal labor for a couple of weeks and she ended up giving birth in 71 minutes from her first contraction to holding her baby in her arms that's my reinvigorated energy I'm going off of right now <laughs> with that said there's been a lot of tears and you know I think one of the things like that just brought me comfort that I was reading is like prodromal labor is just really freaking confusing like you don't know if it's real you don't know what it is it has felt like we're getting close to go time multiple times i've gone to sleep convinced that i was going to be woken up at four o'clock in the morning go get our mm, child go get our child and then just nothing i have the stress test fetal monitoring this afternoon i wasn't really doing ultrasounds this pregnancy but they want to do one to check the amniotic fluid level i haven't had an ultrasound since 13 weeks so if i choose to accept the one today it would be the first since then i don't know if i want to do that or not that was causing me some stress i might not we'll see what happens i'm not really worried about the fetal monitoring of the heart test because at my last appointment his heart had accelerated during it so we'll see what happens and a range of emotions especially with the full moon it has been asking myself a lot is there any like unreleased fear and i just keep coming back to know like i did so much work on all that it's now the 26th saturday went to my fetal monitoring appointment yesterday Heart's good, amniotic fluid, tons of, so I'm not going back till Tuesday. Ended up getting an induction massage after the appointment that evening, and uh, I felt pretty sure I was gonna go into labor <laughs> that night, but it didn't happen. But I feel at peace with everything. Crazy thing happened. I haven't really gotten ultrasounds this pregnancy, and I have kind of felt like the baby has blocked a lot of interventions and just not wanting to be monitored, so I've kind of processed the emotions quite largely in the moment, but then moved through them. So going into this appointment, I had some hesitancy and I just said, you know, if I'm not supposed to have any ultrasounds, the ultrasound machine just won't work. So of course, we're sitting there and she goes, she covers my belly in the gel and she goes to do it and it doesn't work. I'm like, oh my God. And Erica and I look at each other and start laughing. She goes and calls the main midwife and like they're trying to troubleshoot it. And at the exact same time, I start saying, don't worry about it. Eric on his phone is scrolling and one of our friends had posted something like along the lines, you don't need ultrasounds in pregnancy. It's like, do not call customer service. Do not like try to force this. If we can't get it figured out in like under five minutes, it's the baby blocking it. I told her what I had said before I got there. I was like, this is what he wants and we can't push it. And so at this exact moment, she puts in a new battery to the thing and it starts working. She's like, well, what do you want to do? Just got this hit. It was like, oh, it's okay if we do the ultrasound today. It's just, he needed that reassurance that we were going to trust and defend him. But I had also kind of wanted to see him because I haven't seen him since 13 weeks. And I just wanted a little reassurance at this point um, about his positioning and stuff. Yeah, that happened. And now I'm really cold in bed right now.
and I feel good to see what happens in life. We're gonna go to the library this morning, get some new books for Reagan. Baby's gonna come when baby wants to come. <laughs> I was definitely spinning out more yesterday, but then kind of everything just aligned in the afternoon. So I feel good. I don't think I'm gonna have any more highs and lows. I mean, listen, if I make it past 42 weeks, I probably will, but I feel fine for the next week. If you like that video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss my next video, which is this little guy's birth story. And in the meantime, check out my last overdue vlog. Definitely a different experience, much more emotional. And my daughter's birth story, which was a podcast episode, not a video, but I'll leave a link to it here as well. As always, my name's Rachel. Have a good one.